I'm going to where are we. we so, yeah, Absolutely. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Right. So that's so that's now how. we get a dynamic. So DC is is like that central spot, right? That you know, no disrespect to other places around, but sometimes a nigga rather than just save his breath to explain a little bit too much. DC, yeah. bro. DC. It's like a dude who grew up in Manhattan, but if you're out of town, he'd be like, "Man, I'm from Harlem." Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from Harlem. Mm. I'm from 152nd. From and- Stop playing. Yeah. No, your no, your grandma lived there. You only go there once a year. Yeah. I'm from Queens. Stop playing. Yeah, okay, I yeah, get it, I yeah. Get it. But this is what I love about Wale. He never claimed to be from DC. Never claimed that he might have made a song DC chilling. But you know that the next line he say PG chilling. PG mm. is Prince George's County, Maryland. So he say DC chilling. PG chilling. My name. He never claimed to be a Washingtonian because he know how serious Washingtonians take claiming false claiming. You know what I'm saying? So, but, you know, a lot of people like to give him flack or whatever. He ain't really from D.C., but he is he is the number one representative from, from our city, though, for sure. So he shows you a, he shows you a lot of love and embrace you. And I, I, Absolutely. I, I, I don't want to jump too far in the story, but was he, the, was he like maybe the liaison that, that kind of introduced you even to Ross? Of course. One plus one equals two. Mm-hmm. Of course. I don't get my deal with Maybach without Wale. Really? 100%. Yeah. Okay, so all right, so n- now, and I'm probably asking you some bullshit that I've just seen, just people online say in DC. Right. Did you ever feel like because there's a point while he's kind of on and popping, mm-hmm. you ever feel like, well, he's not doing enough for us? Because I've heard, I've heard like you know certain people be like, oh, you could have done more, <laughs> and I mean you hear you hear it from everywhere, like yeah. people from Philly be like, yo, well, me could have done a little bit more. Yeah. You hear people from like wherever, like yo, well, yeah. he could have looked out a little bit more. Yeah. Um, w- w- was that your experience? I, I know maybe not your experience, but what do you say to those people? Um, I feel as though number one, he only one man. Number one, number two, ask yourself who did something for Wale. You feel me? When you go to the studio and you record these records and you go to these high schools and these colleges and you pass out your demo and all that, you got to force your CD on these DJs. You got to force your CD on the strippers at the strip club and tell them play. Nobody's giving us nothing. We had to pay DJs to play this shit. We had to pay studios to record us. We had to pay the security to let us in the club because we wasn't, we ain't, we ain't having the clothes that you pose to wear to get them. Nobody gave us nothing. That's number one. So all this... What he did and didn't do for the city, I, me personally, I don't agree with it. That's number one. Number two, Wale has done a lot for the area. You feel me? It's just people be on that, what have you done for me lately wave. I mean, yeah, you did put me on your album. But nigga, that was six years ago. Put me on a new album. Nah, bro. Like, it don't work like that. One hand wash another, both hands wash the face. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I always looked at the Wale situation and I've... Uh, and again, I might be wrong, and so I was like, I felt like the local support fell back off of him a little bit, and kind of, you know, in most people cases, that local support for that artist, that's the real shit, yeah. right? Like, again, yeah, you could make all type of jokes about Meek Mill and Diddy, but I'm pretty sure you're not going in the heart of Philly and doing that. Yeah. Right. Like they, they, they rock with him. Yeah. Like it, he, he's done a lot for that music scene. Of course. And you know whether even if people don't like him or whatever, they understand that. Right. I remember just the mainstream push about Wale was just like, oh no, nah, like um, this this is not the representative of DC. DC is like, and I and and I guess that's when I see a lot of people like bubbling on the radar. It's like no, DC is like. These super thugged out tough dudes, yeah. and he's not that. Right, yeah. And he never claimed to be too. But um, of course, just to piggyback off what you said, right? Real Washingtonians, I get it. I'm a Washingtonian. So I get it. You're gonna have a lot of Washingtonians who say, nah, Wale is not a description of Washington, DC. And that's cool. One, he's not from Washington, DC. Now, out of towners might view him as a DC nigga, yeah. but he while they not from DC, he from Maryland. You know what I'm saying? So yes, real Washingtonians would definitely not want people to judge Washington DC off of what you see and what you hear from Wale. Naturally, of course, you know what I'm saying. But um, the love that he got for the city and the things that he's done, like working with these artists, 
pulling up doing free shows on A Street Day and all this stuff, giving away Jordans to this school, this basketball. I mean, he done so much for the city, but you know, everybody, listen, when you get a lot of love, you're gonna have some secret hate. Mm. You're gonna have some secret hate. And that's 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 natural. That's what that's what come with life. You feel me? It might be a bitch in high school who really, really liked you, right? But she thought she was lame. But she secretly liked you, right? But then when another bitch come along and this bitch admire you, right? Now this bitch like, oh, he really whack. He fuck with that bitch, da da da. But yeah, bitch. I, I gotta I always had this one specific story. <laughs> this is me in college. This is when like I'm just I'm I bought my first equipment. I'm trying to DJ for everybody. There's um, I'm just, I'm <laughs> I got elementary shit over there. <laughs> There's this one. So so this girl, right, she booked me to DJ in her apartment. Mm -hmm. I got a little speaker, and I got, like, this little little thing. It's not even, like, a real turntable. Mm -hmm. She booked me, I think it was for, like, $50. Okay. And I... And, and I ain't gonna lie, I killed it. Cause yeah. I, I was coming with with like my group of people. We always kind of gave that energy that would make the party lip. Yeah. Anyway, this is now years later. You know, I, I guess people are starting to like what I do because I'm now doing some stuff online. The same person, and I remember she said, "I could only afford fifty dollars for you." Yeah. She see people start talking about me. She said. Yo, it's no way y'all talking about that lame ass nigga <laughs> academics. Why did that bum ass nigga like DJ yeah, for, me for fifty dollars? <laughs> and, and and I was just like, I couldn't believe she was saying that because I was like, damn, I thought you had been like, yo, damn, yo, your your dude showed me love, yo, he's a cool dude. I'm glad y'all jacking him now because I, I was with him early. Yeah, but yeah, I ain't gonna lie, it crushed my soul a bit because <laughs> that's exactly what you're saying. It's like right. They just come back with the hate. I'm like, oh. Niggas man. riding rapes and rides and all type of shit on that bitch now, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got to look up what she do. Okay, okay, bet. Yeah. So, all right. Now, I know, I know Wale makes, I, I don't want to jump too fast. And, mm -hmm. and listen, I, you know, I know you've had a long day, but we, we got to get through everything. Nah, we good. So, we, um... While they show you some love, he is the intro to MMG. But before then, there is starting to be a scene that's popping up in DC where it's kind of an underground scene, but it has energy. Absolutely. Explain that because also it becomes a little bit related to even Chicago where people are looking for real niggas making real music who right. really like that. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. And they start to identify that maybe it's not only Chicago, it's also other places. And Absolutely. then also they start to realize that, oh, some of these real niggas over here fuck with some of these real, real niggas, niggas over, over here. here. Yeah. And then it starts to be a thing. Mm -hmm. Break that down and explain to me in your own way of, of how that was happening. Um, man, that's real interesting, man. So, I, um, I, so, you know, coming up in the rap game and shit, like I didn't have a lot of connects or whatever. So, I used to, I remember when I first created a Twitter, right? I ain't know how the fuck to use a Twitter at all. <laughs> yeah. And um, this was back then when I had music on MySpace, all type of shit, right? I never had a rap video, ever. So one day I'm on Twitter, I'm like, yo, I want to shoot a video. You tweeted that? Yeah, I tweeted that. And this dude tweets me back and he like, I'll shoot your video for free, I'm a cameraman. I'm like, all right, bet. So I'm smart enough to be like, I tell my manager, like, yo, this dude wanna shoot my video. He like, man, ask him to send you some videos he shot. I'm like, all right, so I write him back, like, yeah, send me some videos that you shot. Yeah. This nigga sent me his high school football highlights and footage from a wedding. Oh, man. Yeah. That's my homie Black, man. He's still my friend to this day. Oh, he's yeah. Out of here. <laughs> we met I was going to be like, yo, I, was, I don't know if this guy made a cut. Yeah, <laughs> nah. I met that nigga on Twitter, man, for real. This is a real true story. So, what made you say, let's try it? Whatever choice that we fucking have. We oh, didn't yeah, have yeah, nobody. no bankroll like that. We got a nigga who's willing to shoot it for free. We got a nigga with a cameraman. And although 
He might not have never shot a rap video. Like you could tell he edited his football highlights. Because you know how before the play, the player might highlight or it might let you know who is. So it ain't just footage, it's, it's edited footage. Oh, it's, it was looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay. it wasn't a rap video, though. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, so, you, you seen it. Right, right, right. So, boom, he reached out to me. Um, he like, yo, I'm from Virginia, da, da, da. I go, to, I go to college. and I think he was going to VCU, Virginia Commonwealth University or something like that, right? So boom, he come he come to shoot our video. We in the trenches. We in, we in a hood called Social Quarters. We uptown, knee deep in the trenches. Right, he pull up. He shoot the video. My first video on YouTube do five hundred thousand views. Right. I asked this nigga. I'm like, is you buying views, bro? Tell the truth. <laughs> you were in disbelief. I was in disbelief, bro. I don't know ten thousand people let alone 500,000 people that's going to click and play and watch this video. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I say that to say, now that niggas looking at us on YouTube, we walk around with house arrest bracelets on and phone pauses on and no shirt and no belt. And we just walk around dirty niggas on YouTube, but we rapping. But the music is good, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? Mind you, he go to VCU. You know what's so funny? Like, when people have seen how y'all was, we, we just felt like it was as authentic. We were not thinking that y'all ain't got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh, nah, they, these things just keeping it all bean. They yeah. just keeping it all honey. They don't nah, nah, we was really fucked up back <laughs> okay. in the day. Like, niggas ain't had no paper. I'm talking about sharing shoes, sharing jeans. Like, Damn. Hey, not gonna do What's up? What's up, bro? Man, where them jeans you had on on, on Monday? They right here. Yeah, let me see them. You know what I'm saying? For real? Yeah, nah, we shared jeans, man. We shared soap. You know what I'm saying? For real. Like, Damn. we really fucked up. But anyway, not to, not to go off track, right? So, boom, he come shoot the video. We blowing up on YouTube now. Black, he go to college. Who do you meet in college? Oh, small niggas. Who do you meet in college? You meet all type of people in college. You know what I'm saying? One day, this nigga pulls up at the studio, and he's like, yo, you want to do a song with Chief Keef? I'm like, fuck, nigga, yeah, I'll do a song with Chief Keef. He like, all right, I'm about to um, have you FaceTime him. I'm like, what How the did fuck you mean? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, who the fuck do you? I, How the hell you go to college and get that? Like, who do you know? Like, what you mean you about to put me on FaceTime with motherfucking Chief Keef? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Um, he put me on FaceTime with Sosa. You feel me? So I'm like, damn. What's up? He like, bro, we fuck with you. So somebody, man, we fuck with you out here. Da, 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 da. Mind you, I'm not knowing that I got fans in Chicago, but the, it makes sense because the YouTube views couldn't, it couldn't have just been people in Washington, D.C. watching me. You know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah. he like, man, we fuck with you out here. Yo, that was an era where like people were, you know, and that's why I even understand even how the war in Chirac is yeah. like so impactful. It's like, People were going to what they wanted to see. Yeah. Like, th there's a lot of cameramen now that are as important as Metro Boom in this right now. Absolutely. Like, cameramen, were, they were almost A&Rs. They were picking the right songs, shooting the right visuals, yeah. doing it. And then people were just watching it. And I'm going to be honest with you. I know you say it's, it's not like it was by choice. It was by force that y'all ain't had nothing. Right. People were watching, like, Oh, these niggas look like they really in the hood. Exactly. But y'all was really in the hood. But we was really in the hood. <laughs> exactly. Like, for example, my homie Black, like, this dude never shot a rap video before. His first rap video, 500,000 views. Um, Sosa, first time in D.C., we shot Russian Roulette. That did, what, 13 million, 14 something million views. So now we start to believe in ourselves. Like, he getting better at editing. What we do now? Man, we got to buy an iMac. You know what I'm saying? Man, we got to buy laptops now. Now you start like, oh, all right, we start stealing ideas. Man, what them niggas doing? What kind of, man, you went in academics too. You seen them, them cameras he had? Man, we got to go get them cameras now. That's the, yo, the, yo, that's the best part of things. You know how many times we went and people should be like, yo, 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 yo. I, I'm like, yo, I'm going to talk to them. You walk around and look at them. Look, look at their shit. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that's smart way. So, is, is that your idea? Is it his idea? Um, it's a little bit of both, but I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna never take Brody credit. You know what I'm saying? Because mind you, he graduated high school, he go to college, so he thinking about all the shit that we don't think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All to keep it real, I'm gonna keep it one, right? When everybody was 
disagreeing with the way you was reporting on shit on YouTube. Yeah. Black was the only one that was like, he's a necessary evil. You need this dude. Yeah. You need everything that he's saying about everything. You need it. Trust me. Yeah. And I didn't understand it. Man, nah, fuck this nigga. This nigga's a wild nigga, man. He talking about shit he don't know about. You know what I'm saying? You see, the, he always seen a bigger picture. Well, well, see, he's smart because he's seen it. That was media. Yeah. And, and a part of this whole thing, when you do music, right? Like, even if you're talking about real shit or not, there's a certain elements. You got to check those boxes. Mm-hmm. You need coverage and media to help boost in the visibility that people could have an easier access to the music. Absolutely. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure there's, like, great music happening somewhere, but nobody's covering it. Absolutely. And, and it becomes that, yo, know, if a tree falls in the woods and nobody hears it, doesn't make a sound. Yeah. So... I, and I think that's what Keith figured out when, when he told me he was like man you pussy like for stop doing it and I was like wait I thought you would hate me doing the most but I think he realized like though you were our media yeah maybe you were maybe you were maybe you were 80% wrong who gives a fuck right but you had people that w- were now so interested yeah. that our music meant so much more okay Absolutely. okay alright so Ben so, so, so y'all start kind of figuring it out um how how different is that from like even the streets, right? Where it's like, you know, m- maybe historically you've seen, okay, everybody knows how to get money in the street because a lot of people have done it. But yeah. this is a music game now. This is kind of yeah. different. Like it's different, and you gotta think we we ain't making no money. You mm. know what I'm saying? This is before monetization, and um, you know, I didn't know nothing about getting paid for views on YouTube, and I didn't know that I needed my own YouTube channel, like. Black, he already had his YouTube channel. Nigga, upload the video. Let's put it out to the world. You know what I'm saying? So we wasn't really thinking about money in the beginning. You feel me? We, I think my first feature I ever did was, what, $300? Really? And um, I was so happy to be getting paid legally for something that the amount didn't matter. The fact that you was paying me to be Fat Trail the Rapper is what really meant something to me because we doing all types of shit to make money over here on this side anyway. And 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 then, you know, of course, the $300 wasn't nothing. But it was like, yo, man, a nigga just gave me $300 for a verse. Well, yeah, man, I went on Twitter. Yeah, man, I'm doing verses $300, man. Pull yeah. up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whole time, my verses at that time was worth $1,000, $1,500. But, I, you know, we selling ourselves short because we don't know no better. Hey, that happens at the beginning of every yeah, for every creator. Uh, shit, me too. Like, mm-hmm. there's a time where like you're trying to figure out price, and for me, it was ego though. I didn't want to ask. I didn't want to seem like I was an amateur to ask people who I thought were maybe more knowledgeable. Like, yo, is the price that I'm kind of going with mm-hmm. the fair price? But I was a DJ, so like I always knew if somebody agreed too quick, you're too cheap. Yeah. If they come back once or twice, be like, all right, good, that's my price. That's yeah, my price. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? 